those of you who are joining us for the first time or have been here while I've been gone, I used to be the pastor here, and I got exported somehow. I now live in Singapore, but I'm here this weekend, and I'm really just overwhelmed. I, I kind of dipstick the church. When I got back, I walked around, visited the different departments, and uh, blown away by what God's doing here which is really a testimony that it's not about people, folks. It's not about who's up here. It's all about Jesus. Amen? Amen. And the good news is, uh, apart from all of that, really, I, I want to commend and honor Pastor Paolo Punsalan. Would you give this man a round of applause? Um, this church is healthier. Sometimes people think, okay, because so-and-so left and so-and-so got replaced. It's not. It, this is healthy. We've got, we, were, we were at Victory Weekend, we were baptizing people that just this weekend. But we haven't skipped a beat. Life's going on, amen? Because God is good, and, 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 and you're good. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, yeah, you're good. You're, in Jesus, not, not you personally. Just, just In Jesus, you're good because of what Jesus has done for you. And I want to ask for your prayers. I've, I've, uh, for those of you, I've been 14 months now in Singapore. The church is growing as well. Uh, it's a, uh, Singapore is only 18% Christian. So we're still reaching the multitudes. Uh, there's growth. We've, we've posted about 24% growth last year, and we're designing a discipleship track for a post-Christian, post-modern, multi-ethnic, multi-whatever, uh, multi-platform world of very busy people. And that's what we're trying to do there. This is a picture of the new leadership team in Singapore. Uh, it, if, if it looks like a boy band, okay, that's because we're all old and we're trying to look young, okay? That's me, and then that's, uh, well, well, Mark Chu is young, and Kenneth Wang, and there's Larry Matsuwaki. Uh, you are part of a global movement. You're not just part of a local church. We, are, we have about 600 churches globally. And Singapore is a key part of what we do, and this is a picture. And God's doing good, great things in Singapore. Please pray for us. The one thing that my wife and I Miss a lot is uh, this guy. This guy is Lucas uh, Bonifacio, my my second grandson. Who every time he mentions, every time I'm on Skype and, and or not Skype, uh, Viber or WhatsApp or we say Stata, my heart melts literally. So pray for the loneliness, and I I'm now identifying more closely with what it feels to be an overseas Filipino worker. I'm I'm just uh, no, I'm, I'm not even joking. It's not a joke. It's, it's a it's very serious thing. It's, um, I miss my grandchildren. I miss uh, Philip, who's here right now. And uh, our third grandson, Elijah, who is not talking yet, but the smile alone is enough to melt my heart. The good news is we have two phones. I have a Filipino phone and a Singapore phone. And because of that, I have Viber here, Viber there, WhatsApp here, WhatsApp there, Messenger here, Messenger there, which kind of gets confusing after a while. Because you don't know, where did I get that message? How did that? Then you've got Facebook and Instagram. And uh, when you're my age, uh, senior moments occur very often. <laughs> the point in saying all of that is that, apart from the fact that we're very well connected with you guys and hearing what's going on here, the internet and all these mobile devices in many ways, and if you're using that right now, switch it off for a while. You, you don't need that. If you're taking notes, that's okay. But the reality of all of this is words have become cheap. And because of the internet, words, statements, publications, in a very real sense, have become democratized. And because they become democratized, they become commoditized. And because when something becomes commoditized, it becomes cheap. And sometimes the value is no longer there. And that's why the brilliance and the smartness of our leadership team here decided to do a series on word view. Understanding the fundamental difference between the word of God and every other word that you find out there. Not all words are the same. Words will direct you in the wrong places. Words can literally depress you. Words can misguide you. Words can do stuff to you that are not healthy for you, which is why you want to have a healthy word view. I've been tasked by the leadership of the church to deliver a final message in this series on word view. And the idea is a text out of the book of James, chapter 1, verse 22. It reads, do not merely listen to the word 
and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. Very straightforward verse, it says, do what it says. If you've ever wondered, some of you who've, who've been here before, ever always wonder why I always go down. <laughs> why does he always go down? It's because it's bright up there, and I want to see your faces. It's always good to have a conversation with people. If I could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I would. But it does say, do not merely listen. Interesting about this verse is, you might actually be listening to the Bible and the Word, and yet this verse says you could be deceived. In fact, I dare say that many people who keep listening to the Word are probably, I wonder where cults come from, wonder where all the weird thinking comes from, is because people keep listening and listening and listening, and they're literally almost like uh, the equivalent of a spiritual obese. They're so full of the word, but they're deceived. They're not, they don't even know what they're doing. Our, our, our generation, the prosperity that the world enjoys, the amount of information and books out there is not about shortage. The generation of my forefathers, your forefathers, our grandparents, there was always a shortage of food, of whatever. Today, there is no shortage. In fact, most of the health diseases today are not because of a shortage, it's because of overeating, Amen. My heart disease is about overeating. Cancer is about overeating. Diabetes is about, it's the excess. And that somehow that's true for the church today. The excess of information without the application of the word is a very dangerous thing. That's why the Bible says, do what it says. And don't deceive yourselves that you keep coming to church, but you never do it. And so it has really no value to your life. There's no difference in your life. Further, it says in verse 23, anyone who listens to the word but does not do it is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. You ever been to a mirror? I'm sure you all uh, use some kind of mirror today, right? I mean, uh, how many of you used the mirror today? Those who didn't, that's why you look like that right now. <laughs> but all of us use some kind of mirror. And the purpose of a mirror is to show you what the condition is. At the age, my age, I'm 60 now. Every time I look at the mirror, I see blotches. I see, don't look, don't look too hard, okay? But I see, I see things. I see sunburn marks. I see things that were never there before. And now they are there. Because that's what mirrors do. Mirrors tell you the truth. And when you see that, you realize, okay, something, I've got to fix this. There's two ways of dealing with a mirror. You can either see the truth and deal with it, or you lie to yourself and pretend that's not what it is. You know how you, know how you go to buildings with those circular uh, mirrors that are, that are posts and you stand there because it makes you look slim? <laughs> we like those things, don't we? Things that are not real. But the Bible also says that there's not just that kind of mirror. It says that after looking at himself, he goes away and immediately he forgets what he looks like. That's the other version of this. We forget. Most of the time, it's not because we hate God or we don't listen, it's because we forget. Why is it that there are certain things we apply and certain things we don't? Because we forget to apply them. It says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it. The guy that actually applies it for not forgetting what he has heard or what he has read or what, and, but doing it. That's the whole idea. How many of you know, realize that you don't forget the things you do. It's that simple. And whenever you hear something and you don't do it, you'll forget it. But everything that you don't forget are the things you do. How many of you don't forget brushing your teeth? You don't forget using your phone because you keep doing it. In other words, the more you do it, the more unforgettable it becomes. It's that simple. He says that they fail to do it. And it says that if we do it, the promise is we will be blessed in whatever it is we do. The final chapter of this series is to talk to you about application. There's no sense in knowing the infallibility, the clarity, the, the, the magnificence of the Word of God if you're not able to apply it. It's useless. My illustration of that is uh, a metabolic workout. I was about to leave our apartment in Singapore, and I was about to get out, and there was my wife on the floor, on the mat, and she's doing all these stretches, and, and she's doing all of these things. And, and I saw the video right in front of her, and I said, 
I know that video. That's the metabolic so-and-so workshop. I've watched that. That's a three-year-old video. What are you doing? And she turns around and says, Dave, you ever done it? No. <laughs> Knowing something and doing something are two different things. One will get results. The other one won't. The other one will make you feel good. And you thought you did something about it, but really you just heard it. You really didn't do anything about it. But the question is, why is it that we know the truth, we listen to the truth, in fact, we just don't know the truth, we keep coming back here every Sunday. But why is it that we never apply it? Which is the big question, why? Why, why, why is that happening? I'm going to give you some answers to why we're not applying or the application of the Word of God, and we keep hearing it and hearing it. We're obese with it. We know everything about it. There's so much information. We've got Twitter, Instagram, everybody reminding us, every kind of picture, every meme that you can ever imagine, and yet why is it not blessing me because I'm not applying it? Why? A big part of the reason why is because we don't have an appreciation to it. When you start thinking about things you apply, and I'm about to tread on thin ice here. For all the women in the room, when you look at the mirror, and then you're using your Instagram, it says, magic cream, put this on, and you lose your eye back. How many of you have ever bought a cream like that? Isn't it interesting that that cream is going to get applied not one hour later, but he, he, she hasn't even arrived at the house yet, and she's dreaming of applying it. We apply things we appreciate. We apply things that we believe work. We apply things that we believe will be good for us. And the reason why you don't apply it is because you really don't have an appreciation for the Word of God. And that's the starting point for learning how to apply the Word of God. Do you appreciate what this word represents? The word of God is worth appreciating simply because it's timeless. It is not just a pop thing. We're so used to the pop thing. I want the, the pop financial way of doing life, the pop health thing, the, the app that's so popular, and I just want it because I hope that when I get it, it'll work for me. The Bible's not just pop, it's timeless. When you want something that's valuable, you're looking for something that's timeless. The more timeless something else, something is, the more valuable that thing becomes. Yesterday morning, I got up very early. A good friend, an old friend, a member of this church, is not doing very well. He's, he's getting closer, inching into eternity. And I visited him uh, early in the morning. I had a brunch appointment. I had an uh, afternoon appointment. And I had an evening appointment. I had all kinds of appointments because I'm only here for a short period of time. Very busy running around covering appointments. And I sat with my friend and grasped his hand, knowing that it's probably not going to take a year and it's serious, and he's lapsing into falling asleep. And I opened my Bible, and I started to read the book of Psalms, 119. And as I was reading it, I crossed these words, your word is eternal. The word of God is not just something new and something that's great. It's eternal. You can bet your bottom dollar into it. It's reliable. It stands firm for all generations. Timeless. When you appreciate that certain things, you think about, oh, they had 100 million views. Oh, they had 100 billion likes. Oh, they had 10 million likes. No, 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 the Bible is not 10 million likes. The Bible is the most popular book because it is the most desired and most timeless book. There is no book in history, none, that has been published with 5 billion copies. There's none. There's none, for the record. There is no book in the world that has been translated in 670 different languages. There's none. None. Zero. 
There is no book that has over a thousand versions. None. Because it's timeless. It's not the best-selling book of the month. It's not the best-selling book of the year. It's not the New York Times best-selling book for the last 20 years. It has been there for all of eternity. It is timeless. You want to put your life in something that's timeless. When you appreciate how timeless the Bible is, you begin to appreciate it. And some people say, well, no, Pastor, you know, that's an old thing. The Bible is an old thing. You know, it's a digital. Yeah, it's digital, yes. But you know what? It is the highest downloaded book ever. Because when something's timeless, it doesn't have to be popular. You don't have to like it or, or vote for it. It is timeless, period. Timelessness is valuable. Whenever I come home to Manila, one of the guys that I will inevitably see is this guy. His name is Tito Salazar. He's a member of our church in Pasig. My wife's smiling down there because she knows that if ever I come to Manila, that's the guy I'm going to see. He's the guy who's responsible why I never made it to finish a marathon. He was my coach. He's a national athlete, and I hired him. And about 10, 15 years ago, up 12 years ago maybe, I wanted to run a marathon. So I hired this guy and said, teach me how to do this thing. So we said, finally, after weeks and months of training, he said, you're ready, pastor. You're not quite ready for 42 kilometers, but you're ready for 10K run. So let's do this thing. So we're both running side by side and said, left, right, left, right, left, right, and all these things, right? And finally, we finished the 10K, and I'm so exhilarated. I'm, saying, I'm ready for the, for the 42K. I'm, I'm ready for all of this. And finally, we're parting ways. I'm going home, and as I turn my back, I realize, why in the world am I doing this? And I couldn't answer myself. Why, am I, why do I even want to run, run 42 kilometers? What, why would I do this thing? So I turned back to him and said, why am I doing this again? And he said, I don't know with you. <laughs> and you better answer that before we get serious here. And then it dawned on me, I don't have a reason for doing it, so I stopped doing it. So I'm blaming him for not being able to run a marathon. <laughs> I haven't stopped keeping as my coach. Because marathons may be not be timeless, but squats are, you don't need an app to do this. And I just need him to keep reminding me to do this. You don't need it to do this. And you need it because when you're 60, these things kind of become adhesive to each other. <laughs> you're going to need this to do that. You're going to need this for this guy hurts me. I pay this guy to hurt me. He comes to my house because he, he works in the morning. He works with the military. He comes to my house just to shred my entire body. Literally. And he goes out, and I pay him, and I go to Mercury Drug to buy something to, to reduce the pain. <laughs> but it's timeless. And I said, Pastor, you need to do this. You need to do this. They're not really complex. Reading your Bible is not complex. Obeying your Bible is not complex. They're timeless. Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring Word of God. The Word of God lives. It's enduring. It never dies. It's like a seed that you thought was dead, but it keeps growing. and It never dies, and it produces fruit. For all the people are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers. If you think about all these, oh, we made 100 million likes. Their glories will fade. Like the flowers of the field, the grass withers, the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures. Everybody say endures. It never stops. When you have an appreciation for it, you kind of want to apply it. Many times, the reason why the cream didn't work is because you just stopped applying it. Some of you bought the cream. And I, I, I don't know about you, but have you been to those places where you see the same bottle of cream has never been fully used? Or you bought this food supplement that promised that if you took this, you're, you're, you, whatever, you're part of your body is going to get healed, but then you end up with the same bottle and you didn't even finish a fourth of it. And you gave up on it. 
that are just sticking with it. Flowers fall. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Not stopping. Appreciation is not just because it's timeless, it's because it's the truth. Looking at my friend yesterday, reading again out of Psalm 119, verse 142, your righteousness is everlasting, but your law is not just everlasting, the word of God is true. It's truth that's going to be there. When I moved out of my office here, I had to remove all my books, and I would glance at them, and I thought, this is a good book, but nope, the truth's no longer <laughs> enduring. I pulled out two books from Alan Greenspan, supposedly one of the geniuses of finance in my generation. And I kept those books, and I read it in a garbage. <laughs> it's actually failing right now. And I grabbed books on, on, on the history of the CIA, and I thought, even more garbage. And I, I just got, keep taught, and by the time I knew it, I can't even give away the books because they're all garbage. They're not enduring. They're enduring probably as bestsellers, but they're not enduring truth. Truth that will give you life centuries from now, in all of eternity. That's why you want to appreciate the Bible. All your words are true, it says in Psalm 119, verse 160. All your righteous laws are eternal. Truth and eternity are like the, 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 the two hands that bring together the word of God. Which is why you want to love it. They're true and they're eternal. The other person that I would inevitably see when I'm in Manila is this guy. His name's Manny Leonis. He was a truck driver for a company I owned many years ago. I've known Manny now for 29 years, about to be 30 years. When I was leaving for Singapore, I sat him down and said, Manny, I've got to, I gotta let you go because I'm no longer gonna be living here and I'm going to give you separation pay, and I'll, I'll bless you for blessing my kids. My kids grew up with this guy driving for us. And Manny had a very rather dark past, but he started reading the Word. He started filling his soul with the Word. You know why I love having him? It's not just because I need a driver to drive me around. Every time I'm in the car with him, especially in Manila where the traffic is amazing, you can sit down with him and you can chat with him about John chapter 10. You can sit down with him and talk to him about Deuteronomy and you can sit down with him he'll tell you exactly what God's doing in his life through his word. It's powerful. It's amazing. Now we're both in our 60s so we're comparing how's your knee? How's your body? We're, we're comparing all of this, right? <laughs> and in the midst of that we still talk about the goodness of God. The word of God. The eternal truth of his word. Appreciation is not just the truth. It's not just the timelessness of the word of God. It's treasure. You see this treasure. How do you see the word of God? Or is it just something to some of you, 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 your Facebook inputs are more valuable than the word of God. Here's what Psalm 119.72 says. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. The law of the Lord is more precious. Is that true? Is that really honest? If, if you were presented with wealth today, that is countless, is it more valuable not to your pastor, to your wife, to your husband, to you, to me, and thousands of pieces of silver? Can you honestly say, presented with gold and money and wealth and stock holdings, I can... Say, for all of eternity, God's word is more precious to me. In January of this year, I had a weird indigestion. Couldn't come back to Manila. I had to look for a doctor in Singapore. 
and I asked one of our staff, Kern, I said, Kern, could you introduce me to a doctor? And he said, why don't you just go to my dad? His dad's an 84-year-old doctor. His name is Dr. Uh, Lee Shuan Yu. And he's 84 years old, and I came and I visited him. It was interesting because he was robust, he was healthy, he was walking like he was 65 years old. But he was 84. He's a graduate from Cambridge, he's got a master's degree in doctoring, and he checked me up like I've never been checked up in my life. He took my body mass index, it was a 25-minute checkup. And he said, Pastor, there's nothing wrong with you, you're stressed. And I said, probably, not really realizing it. Probably a combination of different things. Probably the char shu and the chicken rice, amen? <laughs> he said, take these medications, you're going to be fine. Drink a lot of water and wash out the gunk. I liked him a lot. In Chinese New Year, I was told by his son, my dad wants to invite you to the house. So I went to their house. There I am, wearing my red, my my red shirt for Chinese New Year. And that's Kern. Kern works as the kids' pastor of our church in Singapore. That's his dad. That's the youngest brother of Lee Kuan Yew. And he's an amazing Christian. And as I sat through the afternoon and evening with him, I said, sir, why are you so robust? Why are you always happy? Why are you in so much peace? And he said, because I love the Lord. And he walked me to his stable in his study, and he showed me this Bible that's about to collapse. I've lived with this word from the day I became a student at Cambridge. And then with all eagerness and giddiness of a little boy, watch this. And he opens his, I thought he was gonna show me gold bullions. <laughs> he opens his closet, and stacks and stacks and stacks of our daily bread. Nothing high tech, no apps, no Twitter account, but the stability of the word. The word to him is not just timeless. The word to him is not just something that has something. The word to him is a treasure. Application. Appreciation. Why don't you do it? You don't appreciate it. When you realize how timeless, when you realize how precious, when you realize that it's a treasure, the truth, you will apply it. It's the same with the food supplement and the vitamin that you begin consistently using is because you really believe what it does. If you didn't really believe it was doing what it was supposed to do, then you will never do it because you never really appreciated it. And finally, activation. Now let me close with this thought. How do you apply the Word of God? Appreciation, activation. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Word of God is alive and it's active. It's not dead, it's alive. It's actually alive. It's when you use it. It's like when you plant it in your heart and you sow it in your heart, it grows. Sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrates through the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It's alive and active. It's demanding activation from you and me. How exactly do I do this? Pastor, okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. I've got to apply it. I get it. I get the value. I get I appreciate it. It's the truth. It's eternal. It's a treasure. I get it. How? Activate it. How? Number one, ponder it. Try for once silencing your phones and ponder the Word of God. Think of the Word of God. Scripture says in Psalm 1 verse 2, but those who delight in the Lord and, and who meditates on His Word day and night. That's what it means to ponder. 
those whose delight is in the law of the Lord and those who meditate on his word day and night. Scripture says that person will be like a tree planted by streams of water. It shields its fruit in season and his leaf does not wither. Whatever he does will prosper. How do you ponder the word? It's very simple. Whenever you open your Bible, you need to pull out your camera right now. You've got to take notes around. Okay, I'm telling you, this is the old Baptist technique to understanding the word. When you open your Bible, ask yourself, is there a promise to claim? When I'm reading my Bible, is there something here that God's saying that this is a promise that I need to claim it because God promised it already in all of eternity. That's for me. It's just a matter of time. As I read my Bible, I'm asking myself, is there a lesson to learn? Is there something here that I need to learn that will make me a better person, a better husband, a better wife, a better father, a better boss, a better worker, a better employee? Is there something here that I'm learning? As I read the word, I'm looking, is there a blessing to enjoy? If God says, yeah, I want you to enjoy this, then just take it. I'm going to live it and I'm going to enjoy it every day. If God says, you're the apple of my eye, you know what that translates to me? God tells me, you're so cute, I like you. Take it, amen? Why argue? It's a blessing. God says, I like you. And then it says, a command to obey. What is the word saying to me? I need to obey this. This is part of my life. Some of you, you need to obey God about tithing. Some of you, you're still not tithing and you're wondering, why am I not blessed financially? Well, he, the Bible says you're robbing God. There's no way you're going to be blessed. Some of you, it's where you put your eyes and God said, right, forget that. I mean, you're wasting your time. You've got a beautiful wife. You've got beautiful kids. Spend time with him or her, not him. Don't marry a him if you're a husband. <laughs> Sorry. Is there a command I need to obey? Is there a sin I need to avoid? What is this that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing? And there, is there a revelation that I can learn here? Is there something fresh and new that God wants? And you know, we do that with the Word of God every time you read it. It'll come alive. It'll become yours because what, the, what is for you is not for me. Some of you, you're so young. You, you're not a 60-year-old man. God's going to give you fresh revelation that's for you. And you're going to own it and you're going to live it and you're going to love it and you're going to apply it and it will give you life. It will activate you. And for, the, and, for, and for the final time in your life, you're not going to be religious. You're going to be living the word. And you're going to be blessed. Stop rationalizing. Stop looking for the newest invention of how to explain the Bible. The Bible's ancient. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Just do it. Ponder it and then pray it. Here's a sample of how I do it. That when you go to my Facebook account, here's how I, I, I put out my prayers that I write. Not all of them. Some of them are private. But this is an example. A prayer inspired by Ruth 1. Thank you, Lord, for the comfort of Scripture. Thank you that in the midst of chaos, violence, rebellion of Israel, in the time of the judges, you remain true to the, to the widow Naomi and her daughter-in-law Ruth. You're, you're so faithful. Who is Naomi and who is Ruth? These are Moabites. They're inconsequential. They're, they're nobodies. And yet, God, you love them. And I pray that, that I may realize that. that no matter how inconsequential I am, you love me such as your grace and your love. Nothing and no one is too small in your sight. No one is too insignificant that you care for them. Prayer, you're pondering and you're saying, God, I, I want that. I, I want that love. The story of Ruth is our assurance that you watch over the plight of the powerless and the obscure, which we all are. Open our eyes to this truth that we may find grace and peace in our desperate times. In Jesus' name, amen. And then you begin to apply the word. Finally, you proclaim it. 
You begin to speak it out. The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you ponder it, when you pray it, you end up saying it. And you're walking. I was just pondering this as I was leaving for, for Manila. I, I had questions in my mind about the future. And the Lord just said very simply, fear not. Fear not, Joy. Or in the new international version, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. How hard is that? Fear not. Stop fearing. Just obey it. Just do it. Just apply it. Stop. Stop wondering. Stop thinking about all these things. Fear not. Boom. It's over. <sighs> Fear not, Joey. Fear not. Okay? Proclaim. When I'm in Singapore, you can tell I'm dark now because I don't have a car. I'm BMW, right? Bus MRT walk. Every time I walk, I look at the trees and I see the birds and I declare and I proclaim. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor store in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. How much more valuable are you than they? And the Lord will impress upon me. Do you know how many birds there are, Joey, in earth? Billions. And I feed all of them. How much more will I not take care of you? When I'm desperate and I have questions, I go out and look for the sky and I, I ponder and I pray and I proclaim, the clouds are just the dust of your feet. I can't even begin to tell you how many times that saved my life from a decision. And I look at the clouds and I realize God's clouds are just the dust of his feet, which means he can see me. When I feel an ailment and something's not working right, forget not all your benefits, my Father. That you forgive all my sins and that you heal all my diseases. No one who dwells in Zion shall be ill. We're losing because we've become obese with a lot of information. But we haven't been applying, amen? You stand on your feet as we close in the word of prayer. Close your eyes, bow your heads. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you for a minute. Just be still. Don't pull out your phone. Don't think about lunch just yet. Ponder the goodness of God. There's some of you, you're here this morning because God wants you to know the living word. The one who was there from the beginning. The one who's there who created the universe his name is Jesus. And he wants to come into your life. Reside there. The eternal King of kings and Lord of lords. And if that's you, and you're saying, I want that word, I want that eternal word, where he is not just literature, folks. He's a person. And if that's your heart right now, would you just lay your hands in your heart and I'll pray with you. Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Rule and reign over all my affairs. Give me an appreciation of your eternal salvation. I ask you that you forgive me of my sins and that you will teach me how to walk in your ways all the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, what you've just done is you've invited the God of the universe, the maker of all things, the author of the Bible, to reveal his truths to you. And just for the rest of us, would you just lift up your hands as an act of faith? Father, we want to thank you for your holy word. We thank you for this series. We thank you for all that's been said here. But more importantly, God, give us an ability to apply your word to appreciate it, to know it's timeless, it's truth, and that it is a treasure. And more than that, God, more than just being able to do all of that, activate our hearts to ponder, to pray, and to proclaim your word. We realize it's not our abilities, it's not our works, it's not all the trying harder, it's simply activating your word in our lives. This is our faith this afternoon, God. 
be blessed, be glorified, be honored in each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen and Amen.